10 days after cyclone Mick Jam left behind a trail of destruction in Chennai and its surroundings, people in many neighborhoods are still struggling to lead a normal life. Resentment against the government is brewing on the ground. Why are the people of Chennai angry? Vanakkam, this is T. Suresh Kumar. Thank you for joining me in this episode of the Hindu Focus Tamil Nadu. First, let's see how the DMK government handled the cyclone and the resulted floods. To be fair to the government, before the cyclone hit Chennai, they were well prepared for it. The government had positioned NDRF and DSTRF teams along eight coastal districts in North Tamil Nadu. They had all ministers had undertaken inspections. And the government handled the release of water from reservoirs extremely well, which ensured that Chennai did not face a man-made disaster like it did in December 2015, when the gates of the uh, Chembrabakam Reservoir were opened in the 11th hour. But eventually, when the cyclone hit uh, the capital city and its surrounding districts, and the streets were flooded, the fault lines of the government stood exposed. People who had a sense of comfort, uh, believing that at this time they will not be immobilized by the floods, felt helpless. Women, children, elders were stranded in their homes, streets were flooded even though rains had stopped. There is no doubt it was an extraordinary situation. But an extraordinary situation like this when there were historic rains demanded an extraordinary response. But eventually what happened is the relief and rescue operations were not on a scale uh, that would assuage the agony of the people. There were some reasons why the people were angry. Number one was that before the floods, minister after minister kept reassuring the people of Chennai that at this time the city will not be flooded unlike in the previous years. In fact, just uh, last month, uh, the minister for municipal administration K. Nehru had gone on record uh, saying that the Greater Chennai Corporation had completed 98% of the stormwater drain work in the city. He said 23,000 workers of the corporation were on hand to deal with any eventuality in case of rains. This gave a false sense of comfort to the people. They believed that this time their homes would not be marooned. Therefore, when water entered their homes and the streets were left flooded, they were frustrated. Not just because that of the fact that they were marooned, but also because they did not have access to essential commodities. Milk was being sold for 100 rupees a packet. Drinking water cans were not available. And they were not able to use electricity to pump water into the overhead tanks. Explanations by ministers and the chief minister that uh, the city had received historic rains did not cut ice with the people. It is not as if the people did not realize the enormity of the situation. They were conscious that this time the chief minister was on the ground. Ministers were inspecting uh, rain affected areas. So was the Chennai mayor. But however, there was an evident lack of empathy on the part of some politicians. People wanted to be heard. But we saw on the street a minister brushing aside a school teacher who wanted to give a petition. Likewise, one of the city MLAs went on record saying that this is the maximum that the government could do in this situation. And there was no scope for any improvement. The body language, tone and tenor of some of the elected representatives gave the impression that they were doing the people a favor by merely visiting flood affected localities. And therefore, the people were incensed over these actions. The government also delayed seeking the help of voluntary agencies and NGOs in taking forward relief to the people. As a result of this, uh, the relief that was handled by the relief materials handled by the volunteers was restricted to certain areas. North Chennai, which is just a few kilometers uh, from the state secretariat, was cut off from the rest of the city. And it took some days for relief material and aid to reach the people. One other aspect that uh, stood out like a sore thumb was the manner in which the DMK and its sympathizers uh, behaved on social media. Well, on the one hand, uh, Industries Minister T.R.B. Raja, who heads the party's IT wing, that is the Information Technology wing, was trying his best uh, to reach out to the stranded people and to ensure that they were rescued. The credit of all this work was being taken away by another group of party cadres uh, who were behaving more like an intimidation members of an 
IT wing, that is the intimidation and troll wing. This group wanted to paint a very rosy picture of the ground situation. They wanted the world to believe that the government was doing its best and people were happy. Therefore, they did not take kindly when volunteers or people who were affected by the floods posted videos or messages highlighting the plight. They went after journalists, they started abusing journalists, intimidated them for presenting the ground reality and showing the mirror to them. This certainly ended up affecting the image of the government and the ruling party than doing anything good for them. Now what could be the political fallout of this? We all know that once upon a time Chennai was an electoral fortress of the DMK, a fortress which even the charisma of MG Ramachandran MGR could not demolish. But somewhere down the line in 2006, the party started losing ground in the capital city of Tamil Nadu and in 2011, it faced a near washout. And it took several years for the party to retrieve the lost ground and it made a clean sweep in the elections in 2021. However, the anger of the people on the ground as of now means that it could impact the party electorally when the elections come, if not the parliament elections, certainly during the assembly elections. It remains to be seen if the DMK will take adequate steps to ensure that it regains the confidence of the people. What could possibly help the party is that the AADMK failed on the ground to capitalize the situation. The party's uh, leaders were hardly visible. Of course, its general secretary, Edapadi Palanisamy, made a couple of uh, tours in the city. And uh, D. Jayakumar, one of the prominent leaders from Chennai, was on the ground. But still, people felt that the party did not adequately do things to take on the DMK politically on this issue. I shall meet you in another video. Uh, until then, this is D. Suresh Kumar signing off. Thank you.